Hello everybody and a good day to you all today. I'm talking about Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice directed by Jack Snyder starring Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Jesse Eisenberg, Diana Lane, um, Lawrence Fishburne, Jeremy Irons, and Gal Gadot. In this movie here you have well, Batman vs Superman. See the world has been divided from what happened in Man of Steel. All the destruction, all the death had people thinking that Superman cannot be trusted. But he has been doing a whole lot of good things after this, helping a lot of people. And so a lot of people are starting to come around and start to believe in him. But not everybody is on his side. So, so the city is kind of split. And even though he's trying to do the right thing and try to help people, it's not having the effect that he wants to have because people are still dying around him, even though it's not his fault at all. But the thing is, though, since he's there, people are just blaming him. And the, just blaming him. Well, he was there, so either he didn't want to save them or he caused them to die. So it's just, crap, dude, I'm doing the best I can here, okay? I didn't make that guy come up and shoot, shoot the person. I, didn't, I, I stopped him. He already shot him. I can't save everything. So people, so people are divided. Some people are happy and grateful. Other people think he should go away. Then you have Batman. And Batman witnessed what he um what what the, the the destruction he caused when his when his fight was with was Zod. He was there, and all people in his um in his, in his building were killed because of it. So he's a little pissed off about him. He doesn't really trust Superman at all, because he, he believes he has too much power, and we can't stop him. If he wanted to take over, we, we couldn't do anything. We'd be helpless. So he has to find a way to take him out. Then you have Jesse Eisenberg who also had the same feelings towards Superman. He felt as though he's too powerful, and he believes that anybody that powerful can't be good. Can't be. He's a godlike being on Earth. He, he can't be good, because power corrupts. That's what he believes, so therefore, he must be corrupted. So he has to find a way to take him out. And in this world, you find, well, kryptonite. They find kryptonite for the first time. Oh yeah, before I go any further, I'm going to let you know right now, there's going to be a lot of spoilers in here. There's going to be a lot of spoilers. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of them. So if you're not ready to hear this yet, watch the movie first, and then watch this, and then watch this. But if you don't care, then let's go. Okay, here we go. So they found kryptonite in this, in this world. And you have Batman and Lex Luthor both fighting over the kryptonite, really. Because Batman want to use it, to take him out, take out Superman. Superman and Lex Luthor want to use it to take out Superman. But he also has other plans too, involving them both because he wants them, these two people, to fight each other. Whoever wins, whoever takes over, then he'll then he'll to take out that person. So if Superman wins, well he has he has he has a backup plan to take him out. And if and if Batman wins, well he he has plans to take to take him out too. So he's trying to get his two, his two enemies take each other out so he can pretty much reap the benefits. And then you have um, Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot, and she has her own agenda in this picture. She's not really involved with this whole feud between Batman and Superman. The only reason why she gets involved because what's happened, what's going on in the city with all the destruction, and she just can't ignore it. Yeah. So a, a lot of things happen in this picture, a lot of destruction, a lot of things happen, but if you have seen the trailers, you already know that they, they're going to team up and become a team and to fight down the big bad guy, which is Doomsday. Yeah. Okay, now, the thing about this movie is, here's the bad part about this movie. The bad part about this movie is the marketing itself. Because of the trailers, it revealed too much about the movie. Too much was revealed, so therefore, when you're watching the movie, if, you see, if you've seen all the trailers, watching the movie, you're not surprised by anything. There's no, there's no big reveals that you can that you can see, and you already know how it's pretty much going to end anyway. And even though it doesn't, the trailer doesn't give you beat for beat for beat to the ending, because you know so much already, you already know how it's going to end by watching the movie. Because you pretty much fill in the blanks. You're like, okay, I know how it's going to end. Yeah, so that's the problem. Another problem that this movie has are the visions. There's a lot of dreams and visions in this picture. Batman has a, has a bunch of them. And the first one was, was, was about his childhood 
we live in the whole death of his family, the death of his parents again, which they, which they show in every Batman film ever. I'm sorry, I'm sick, I'm sick and tired of that. We already seen his origin already. We don't need to see it no more, but whatever. They show it again here, and he has that vision. Then he has another vision, which was kind of confusing to me because he's like, he's like, this is like the future, and the world's been, has been destroyed, and Superman has his own per private army, and Batman trying to take him on by himself, but he's failing, and then parademons show up, which I had no idea why they were there. I just because Apocalypse hasn't been has been introduced in, in, introduced in this world yet. There's no, I mean, not Apocalypse. I mean, Dark Side hasn't been introduced in this world yet. And I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out. So why would Batman think dream about parademons? He doesn't, he doesn't even know that they exist. That makes no sense to me. Yeah. And then Superman has a vision, a vision too. That makes that makes no sense to me. Okay, Superman's having doubts about himself because. No matter how much he tries to help, it's not working. He's not getting the trust of the people that, that he wants to get, and the and um the consequences are are, are too high. People are, are dying around him, and he can't seem to stop it. So he he decides to quit for a while and go away. Then he has a vision about his father, who's supposed to be trying to give him some kind of word of advice, but his advice. Didn't really seem like it helped anything or made any sense. He's talking about how he was younger and his and the farm about to get flooded. And they managed to save the farm from getting flooded. But all they actually did was redirect the water to another farm and their farm got flooded instead. And that was the advice for Superman. I was just, what? So you're telling him that what he's doing is pointless? I had no idea how you we would get from that. I don't know. It was like, like some of these visions could have been cut out. Like I don't understand why they were there. It didn't help. It didn't help. It didn't help the picture at all. It didn't help nothing move along. It was just there to be there. I don't. I don't know. Whatever. Another problem I had was, I didn't like how, how, how Doomsday looked. His, his design didn't, didn't look that, that great to me, and the CGI wasn't really done well to make it look believable. So, that was a problem. I also don't like the fact that how they, how they introduced Doomsday in this picture. I think he did, I think he did it too soon. I think he did it too soon. Now, before, like, like I said before, it, it are going to be spoilers in this in, in this one. It's all going to be spoilers because it's like in the comic books when D Superman fought Doomsday, he died, but he also stopped Doomsday in the process. But this happens in here too. Superman dies in this movie. But it doesn't have the same impact as it did in the combos because, see, the world was divided in this world right here. People, Some people loved him and some people hate him. So when he died, and you've seen everybody mourning for Superman's death, it made no sense. It was just, why are you mourning? Just five minutes ago, you wanted him to die anyway, so you should be happy. At least the alien threat's gone, so why are you so disappointed that he's dead? It makes no sense. Because in the comic books, he was already established as Superman. Everybody loved him. He's been saving the world a, a lot of times. So when he died, everybody felt that. Like, oh my God, Superman died. Oh my God. Space Jesus is dead. Oh Jesus. Why? Why? He was so young. But in this movie here, he died, but you see everybody mourning for him. But why? You didn't like him. I mean, some people did, yes. But majority of everybody else would like to go home, alien, go away. But, oh, well, whatever. Oh, okay. Now, let's just, now I'm talking about Jesse Eisenberg. His performance was good. I did enjoy it. But it's not, it wasn't the, the Les Luthor I actually wanted. But I did enjoy the Les Luthor that I got. It's like going to a restaurant, ordering a meal. You get the wrong meal, but the food tastes good. So you didn't get you didn't get what you wanted, but the food was okay. So you were just eh, all, all right. I think I, me personally, the best Lex, Lex Luthor I've seen that that was live action by a real person was done by Michael Rosenbaum and Smallville. Yeah, because I think he was like closest to the comic books that I, that, I, that I've ever seen. Other than the cartoon, I think Michael Rosenbaum was the best Lex Luthor I've ever seen. His performance wasn't bad. It's just that I wish he was more like Lex from the comic books. Yeah, that, 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 that's just my personal taste here.
Now let's get into the good stuff. I think Ben Affleck did an amazing job as Batman and as Bruce Wayne. He now he managed to, to balance the two because some actors they could do a good Batman, but the Bruce, the Bruce Wayne lacks. And some they could do a good Bruce Wayne, but the Batman is not really all that great. But he did both, and I think he did amazing. He, he looked amazing too. He's in great shape. I well, God, he really put the work in. And the suit looked amazing. And I didn't even mind the voice. The rocking the voice was pretty cool too. And the fight choreographer that he was at the scene as Batman was fantastic. I think that his, his relationship he had with Jeremy Irons as um, Alfred was great. It was like a a, win, a, win, a witty banner between the two, and I, I, I actually did enjoy. Um, Gal Gadot, even though she's not in it that much, I think she did a good job as Wonder Woman. I believed it, and I believed her. Um, and I, I even like um, Henry Cavill as um, Superman. I think he did a pretty good job. Watching him struggle and trying to find um trying to find his place and to find um trying to be the hero, but even though it's not working in his in his favor, even though, even though people aren't, aren't liking him, he's still trying to be do the right thing. I actually did enjoy that. Overall, I think the movie wasn't that bad. I actually did enjoy it. I mean, it's not perfect. It does has its flaws, but it wasn't that bad. I actually did enjoy it. If I give the movie a grade, I'm giving it a solid B. Yes, I'll give it a B. Don't take my word for it. So check it out for yourself. If you have seen Batman, Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice, leave your comments down below and let me know what you thought about it. But if you haven't seen it, let's say check it out for yourself. Hopefully, you will enjoy it just as much as I did. Well, that's all I gotta say about that. So give my channel a big like and a thumbs up. Boom, and subscribe to my channel and share. I really would appreciate it. So, like I always say in my dreams and in real life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. A uh, peace out. Uh, peoples.